Hello community, artificial intelligence in genomics, in molecular systems, are you sure? Let's have a look. So here you have our beautiful DNA, here you have here our double helix strand, and you know we're interested in genomic sequences, fundamental for any scientific medical or biotechnological applications. And here, you know our disoxyribonuclein acid, its beautiful double helix structure. It is comprised of four nucleotide bases, adenine, cytosine, guanine, and tumine. And DNA contains here the genetic code for forming our proteins. Please remember proteins, we will encounter them at the end of this video again. So, with genomic sequences, this is a real powerful tool if we want to combat diseases, if we want to develop personalized medicine and targeted therapies. But you can also use it in agriculture, for crops, for livestock, to increase here the drought resistance, to increase the disease resistance. So, genomic sequences, if you know them and if you understand their effect, this is a real powerful tool. But of course, they also play here a crucial role in developing new drugs, new medicine, because we target the specific molecular pathway, molecular systems. And there is pharmacogenomics. This studies how genes now affect a person's individual response to drugs. It relies on genomic sequences to predict here the efficacy and the side effect profiles, and it should lead to a safer and more effective personal treatment, your personal medicine. Now, just one term and we go, because remember I told you DNA sequences, we have two strands here in our DNA, this famous double helix structure that we use here in genomics and bioinformatics. And the term is simply RC equivariance, and it stands for reverse complement equivariance. And this is a crucial property because remember DNA is composed of two strands that form here this double helix and each strand being the reverse complement of the other one. So you see real simple explanation what it is and it simply means that each base on one strand is paired here with the complementary base on the opposite strand and the order of bases on one strand is reversed relative to the other strand. Therefore, equivariance in this particular contents refers to the ability of a model to recognize that the DNA sequence and its reverse complement essentially carry the same biological information. You might all want to say as by design. Beautiful. Now, to choose the right AI system, remember the DNA can be billions of nucleotide base pairs long. And therefore, yeah, how do we determine the reverse complement of a DNA sequence? Simple. You just reverse the order of the nucleotides and then replace each single nucleotide base with its complement base. And this operation is crucial for understanding here, of course, the bidirectional nature of our DNA strands and all its implication in the genetic research and molecular biology field. Beautiful. So what are researchers at universities in biolabs doing? What is the AI system? Well, like anybody else on this planet, they use here the most simple system that we have today, large language models. So they rely here on LLMs. And what they do for many of their genomic tasks, such as to predict the effect of variants on gene expression, you know that this has some real long range interaction as nuclear acids, even up to 1 million base pairs away from a particular gene, can have significant regulatory effects. So you have to choose an LLM that is specialized in long range interaction. And this study started before here the ring attention of our transformer network with a context length of 1 million to 10 million token was operational. So you guessed it to have here this very, very sensitive system of our nucleotide base pairs. 
to have here the exact, the precise sequence, researchers turned here to a member system. And the member system was chosen for their long range interaction before ring attention was here. And what they had to do, they had to improve the member system to a bidirectional member system. Because, of course, you have to look to the left and to the right of your double helix structure to get here the complete information. So, a bi member or a bi directional member system was developed in a simple way. The first extension was to apply to the standard member S6 module to convert it from a causal, this means from a left to right, to a bi directional member system. And the authors achieved this by applying the members module twice. What a coincidence! One to the original sequence of our double helix and one to a copy that is reversed along the length dimension. And to combine the information, the output of the reverse sequence is flipped again along the length dimension. Remember, flipped along the length dimension and added to the fourth one, we have just a simple concatenation in mathematical terms. Beautiful. Now, if you're not familiar with here the uh, S4 system and the advanced S6 system, here you have both algorithm. You see it's almost identical. The main difference is simply by making some parameter function of the input sequence. And of course, along with associated changes to the tangent shapes itself. So as you can hear, with an S4 system, we have a time invariant system. And now with an S6 here, we evolve here to a time varying system. This is all there is to it. And if you want to have a deep dive, either you go here to the original literature, I can highly recommend. Or if you would like to see a video I have here, where I explain here the member S6 architecture, are they better than the self-attention transformer network with a quadratic complexity of the context length. And here we do a supervised fine tuning and a DPO alignment with the complete code. And we test, we evaluate the output here of this fine-tuned and aligned member system. Beautiful. So here we have it now. We have AI in genomics and we apply a simple LLM to find here over our neural network, new drugs, new medical component, new insight into whatever is connected here with biotechnological application and with human genomic data. So, this is a real sensitive topic and remember the system itself is extremely sensitive to just to exchange one nucleotide base pair. So given this extreme amount of precision that you would need and you have a large language model that is prone to hallucination, to invent facts, to invent rules, to whatever, now what we have in the double helix structure is of course here a redundant system. But before, let's just go from a member system to a bidirectional member system. And as I told you, you just add another member system. And for the new added member system, you just flip here around to get here to your complementary nucleotide base. This is all there is. So now you know how to construct the architecture of a bidirectional member system. Great. But you now want to include now here. The reverse complement equivariance. You want to bake this into the architecture itself. And here you have it. This is now your member DNA block here. And as you can see, you simply split up the channel and you have the reverse complement equivariance, the second strand of your double helix here. Now you treat in the exact same way. You just remember it's the complementary. And you have kind of a redundancy now in your system. And with this advanced redundancies, you might think that the performance of this system must be significantly improved. So a member DNA block, but my, maybe we have a look at the member DNA block in the complete system. So there was a study here by Cornell University, Princeton University, and Carnegie Mellon University. And they developed here this bidirectional equivariant long range DNA sequencing model published March 5th, 2024. Now, since this is an LLM that is really easy, we have the pre training, we have the fine tuning, we have the alignment, like we have with the LLM. 
So pre-training data was simply the HG38 human reference genome data. Training split compromised the 34,000 segments, extend to a context length of 1 million, covering the genome and amounting to around 35 billion tokens, or in our case here, it's a nucleotide base pair that we have. And then, as in our LLMs, we mask 50% of the token, and of the mask token, 80% are replaced with the specific or the special mask token, like we do in BERT, for example. 10% are replaced with random token, and the rest of the 10% are left unchanged. This is the traditional way how we pre-train here our BERT and SBERT systems. Beautiful. Now, they call this new system, this novel bidirectional DNA language model architecture that enforces here this reverse complement equivariant structure of our double helix structure, caducis. Beautiful. So, remember, same old thing, trained here with the mask language modeling objective used already in the classical bird system, standard masking procedure, as always. And here we now have the complete structure. At the bottom, we start here with an RC equivariant token embedding module in the classical way. You have now integrated here the reverse complement token embedding, of course. Then you split the channel when you enter the member DNA blocks and you have simply two bidirectional member blocks. And one is, of course, for the reverse complement equivariance calculation, if you want. And then the logic of this new DNA language model, they are produced by passing it the output of its final member DNA block through a RC equivariant language model head, the same that we did with BERT or with SBERT, our sentence transformer model. So you see the architecture is absolutely identical to LLM. So we just have here member blocks, bidirectional member blocks in here. Given here that the structural redundancy of a double helix structure, we are able here to implement the reverse complement now and have a member DNA. And as I told you, the performance of this system should be significantly better. Because given here the extreme precision that is needed here for our genomic sequence analysis, we should have a better result. And the author of the studies published here the genomic benchmark data here for some benchmarks, beautiful. Just have a look here at the classical member system. And here you have this new DNA language model system here with this reverse complement equivariance baked into its architecture. And you would expect 10, 15, maybe 20% improvement. But let's have a look here. Member is 0 0.74. And this new system is 0 0.75. Or 0 0.90, 0 0.91. Or 0 0.93, 0 0.94. So this would be, for me, an indication that the system is not living up to its expectation. And maybe this member structure, or maybe this bidirectional member structure with the reverse complement equivariance is not a perfect tool that we are looking for in genomics or bioinformatics. So I think this is here really the start of a process. And you might even ask if member is the right tool for it now that we have a ring attention here, a context window in our self attention transformer network with up to 10 million tokens. Context length. Beautiful. So this is this. But of course, analyzing now the potential of the member DNA blocks that we use here to analyze here the structural sequence here of our DNA. You might ask, is there any other way? And yes, we have here from China, Beijing Institute of Technology, Peking University and Shanghai Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. And they published here at the end of February 2024 that now they are not focusing on the genomic information, but they are focusing already on a protein language model. So you see, it's a step up in complexity. They go now to the protein level and they introduce a protein as word language modeling training objectives. And it is rather simple what they do here. They, as they call it, unify here protein prediction of this large language model and they combine it here simply with the word prediction functionality of an autoregressive 
language modeling task that we know and that we love from our classical systems. So now the words are more or less our proteins and we try to train the system on our training data. And if the genomic information there might be not a 100% performance of those systems. They just now try to apply a, the same AI system here on a different level of complexity. We are not operating here on a DNA level. Now they're operating here on a protein level. And I would very cautiously say, be extreme careful if you apply our current AI system that we know that large language model, they love to hallucinate. They love to invent facts. They love to invent data. They love to have no clear causal reasoning path forward. And now we give those not perfect LLM system in genomics, maybe in human genomics here. And we use them as tools to determine and discover new patterns here for our human personalized medicine. If there goes something wrong with just one nucleotide base, it can have uncalculated effects on the outcome if we do not are very, very careful with applying large language model to human genetic research. So if you are operating in this area, I understand that you want to use the latest AI technology, but maybe our current precision of our large language model is not good enough to be really a DNA code sequence machine. Maybe our current LLM needs to improve much further to be able to be a useful tool for genome sequencing. I would love to hear your ideas. Leave me a comment in the description of this video and it would be great to see you in my next one.